I'm Scott Schobel, the Chief Medical Officer of Vico Therapeutics. Vico Therapeutics is an RNA therapeutics company developing antisense oligonucleotides for CNS neurodegenerative disease. The reason I joined uh, Vico was um, I am convinced that ASO technology has great promise uh, to interrupt, uh, in particular, monogenic uh, disease uh, pathophysiological cascades that are common to diseases like uh, Huntington's disease or the spinocerebellar ataxias at their source uh, and make a big difference for patients and their families. Both uh, Huntington's disease and uh, the common forms of the ataxias or, or the uh, spinocerebellar ataxias are uh, monogenic uh, neurodegenerative diseases that are you know, caused by the uh, CAG repeat expansion mutation. So diseases like SCA1 and SCA3 and uh, Huntington's disease all share this um, underlying uh, common uh, genetic root cause. The difference, of course, is where the mutation lies and in, in which proteins uh, to result in a particular presentation of, of each of these uh, diseases. Uh, both fields um, have a lot of exciting research happening, and I think there's great hope for uh, individual uh, individuals and their families that live with these diseases. And I think the reason to hope is, is that um, in the field of um, neurodegeneration, generally, more and more, there's a greater appreciation of uh, the relationships of um, the uh, biomarkers to clinical outcomes, a better understanding of the natural history of the diseases themselves. Uh, these are diseases where you can readily track um, you know, the, the markers of disease progression and measure the, the clinical measures of progression themselves. But what's more is that um, the underlying causal uh, cascades of disease have been better and better characterized such that um, not only have the um, genes of the disease has been discovered, the causal genes, but also then uh, there's now an ability to measure in many cases, uh, the proteins uh, in patients uh, that, that are active in causing the diseases. So for example, in uh, Huntington's disease, you can measure CSF mutant Huntington in a patient, or in SCA3, for example, you can measure the mutant ataxin 3 protein. And this gives you the ability to, um, in a drug development context, measure the so-called on-target effect of the drug in modulating the direct key molecular target of the disease. And so that's a way of um, improving the uh, knowledge uh, or quality of an early drug development program to understand whether it's on track or not. Now, so far, in the in the, in the both of the uh, uh, broad, broad categories. We're talking about Huntington's disease and the ataxias. There's been a lot of great biomarker research, which uh, shows the progression patterns of the uh, mutated proteins over time, uh, shows the relationships to clinical outcomes. Um, but also uh, there's research that's linked these more uh, upstream uh, key molecular mediator proteins to downstream biomarkers of disease pathophysiology, such as markers um, uh, as uh, neurofilament light protein. And uh, that's a damage marker, uh, an axonal, and, and to some extent, a marker that's expressed in the cell body of neurons that tends to uh, predict disease progression. Um, so uh, there's more and more ability uh, uh, to measure these in patients, to understand the relationship to pathophysiology and measure the uh, on-target drug effects. So that's a really good setup then for, for developing a drug and establishing um, safety, tolerability, and um, then the, the ultimate clinical outcomes. Where the fields are now, Huntington's disease is still, despite all of the advances of antisense technology and gene therapies, in early days of drug discovery and development, there have been some early missteps. Uh, examples such as, um, you know, the, the Wave uh, SNP one and two programs, Roche's Tomonersen program uh, to date, uh, and uh, also, you know, Unicure 
uh, is, is, and uh, 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 ran a plan from Novartis and um, also uh, our own VO659, um, all of these, um, and there's a couple of others I'm not mentioning uh, just for brevity, but all of these have been in what are called um, mostly early stages of clinical development. Uh, Tom and Erson had a phase three from which there was much learning that's being applied now to a phase two. But the fundamental point is, is that in Huntington's disease, there's only been uh, the ability to apply these therapies for about the last five to six years in an investigational drug development context. Um, there have been critical learnings uh, in this phase of development for the Huntington's field. Um, I think there has been more and more of appreciation that there may be a threshold of, um, of total lowering of a target protein, such as Huntington protein, that you want to pursue in a drug development context. Perhaps you don't want to go above around a 50% lowering on the wild type protein, for example. I think that's a learning that the field um, is uh, starting to uh, appreciate. I think there's also the learning that um, you can't dose too much of a drug. Um, so for example, um, probably dosing 100 mg or above of an ASO too frequently is not a good idea in a CNS um, context. Uh, and that's very helpful then for follow-on programs across companies to apply those learnings uh, to approaches to bring development forward. Still to date in Huntington's disease, there has been no uh, therapy which is punched through to show convincing slowing of clinical progression in a drug trial context. Um, but I think that just reflects the fact that all of these programs have had these kinds of early learnings that I mentioned. Uh, I believe that um, the first company to um, have the right molecular approach, as well as to target um, the right exposure levels of the drug, which is basically drug development 101 and clinical pharmacology, will likely have the effects of the on-target protein, but also the downstream markers such as NFL that should link to a positive clinical benefit risk. Um, in a trial coming to you sometime soon, from one of these companies, I would predict from everything I've seen. And the reason to believe that is um, we have lessons learned from not only Alzheimer's disease now, where um, it's another classic neurodegenerative disease, where uh, the beta amyloid protein, which is causal in that disease cascade, has been shown to be reduced and linked to clinical outcome uh, convincingly now from more than one uh, drug and trial. So that's very encouraging for the general approach. Um, as also the recent case of Toperson SOT1 ALS uh, that uh, Ionis and uh, Biogen have successfully um, received approval for ALS, which is a neurodegenerative disease, monogenic cause, ASO technology, showing effects on target, on NFL, and clinical outcome. So I think that general principle can apply for Huntington's disease. It's just that you need the right drug, the right molecular approach, and the right the right uh, exposure and development path for it to succeed. If you look at SCAs, SCAs are, uh, and that includes the best, the what most well-studied SCA would be SCA3 because it's the most prevalent of the SCAs, though others um, also are, are somewhat uh, prevalent, though getting into ultra-rare prevalence such as SCA1 uh, and the other SCAs. Um, this is a generally less well-studied area, both in terms of natural history, as well as um, trial development experience um, relative to uh, Huntington's disease, where there's large natural history data with years of follow-up. Although there are some of these uh, sources, such as the Reddy SCA data, CRC uh, SCA, there's some, there's some out there. Um, it's at a different scale uh, than the Huntington's disease effort. And that, that largely reflects um, the disease prevalence of the ataxias, which tends to be a third or less of Huntington's disease. So despite the same underlying uh, pathophysiology and, and molecular cause of the CHG repeat expansion mutation, there's just fewer individuals out there living with ataxias. So it's, it's, there's been less um, of uh, large scale um, knowledge developed uh, from that field. Nonetheless, uh, from what efforts have been done, there's a similar theme that emerges. Uh, there appears to be abnormalities, certainly of the mutated proteins, which are um, beginning to be measurable. I mentioned the mutant ataxin 3 protein in SCA3, um, and NFL can be measured in, the, in these diseases and is shown to be elevated 
Um, and there's a range of brain abnormalities uh, being characterized. Clinical progression occurs reliably like the other monogenic neurodegenerative diseases. So this is all a really good setup to bring a targeted um, drug approach to the ataxias. And I expect um, that similar, similar to how it's happened in Alzheimer's and ALS, and uh, probably sooner to soon to happen in Huntington's, uh, the ataxias should be either right uh, on pace with Huntington's um, or maybe just slightly lagging for the lack of knowledge, but should catch up quickly um, and, and see a drug development effort be successful that's targeted to the underlying cause. So, so there's been relatively few programs in the SCAS. Uh, there, you know, there there have been a couple of um, downstream approaches that companies are developing small molecules. Um, you know, there there's um, you know uh, been relatively few ASOs developed. Uh, in fact, there's only been two in the clinic for the SCAS uh, that that have uh, been developed to date. Uh, the Biogen Phase One program recently closed. Uh, and we now have, we are the only ASO uh, at VICO in development for the ataxias. Uh, so it's relatively early days for the SCAS, I'd say, relative, uh, and the ataxias relative to the uh, ASO and gene therapy efforts in Huntington's disease.